uh, pushing the buttons for us, so if anything goes wrong, don't blame him. OD stats. Right, OD pixel on this. How do I get rid of my Windows bar? Oh, there we go. Let's push some buttons. Ready to go? Yeah, sure. I definitely hear Toby in the background. <laughs> right, it's it's all right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to LGD Forever Young. Taking on Team Liquid. Group A action coming your way as Epicenter. Day two. The first day of real action kicks off. I'm LD. I am joined here by gods and by golly gods. We've got a good one. For LGD Forever Young already took down OG. Did it 2-0. Came out out of the gate. And Team Liquid, meanwhile, the Star Ladder champions looking to prove that they can do it against some Liquid's stiffer competition. Yeah, this is exciting considering, yeah, LFY's start and their big upset already. Liquid, I'd say one of the favorites of this tournament, even though they may be not coming off the best result at the Kiev Major. They won the last epicenter, and they're just a team that, Ten when they're in form, can minutes. easily beat anyone. So we'll see how they deal with LFY. They have targeting oh, their bands seconds, directly right? at what LFY were playing yesterday. Uh, Night Stalker, Batrider, and Dusk. LFY are like, we want to get a four-position hero before no, they're all gone. They pick Kunkka. Liquid get Fire some Liquid team. Heroes. Darkseer Tusk. This is looking like... Mind Control. I've been playing Darkseer for about two years now, and yep. Pierce times have not changed. Uh, the Kuroki Tusk grabbed up, likely as well. LGD Forever Young, I'm very curious to see how they adapt, because it seemed like having that vision advantage was huge against OG. Not going to be obviously available to them here. In fact, no real vision control hero as of yet to speak of. Granted, Ten pretty early in the draft, remaining. but... We'll see how they adapt as things move yep. along. Seems they're cl placing like a clear remaining. hierarchy on four positions. Like Night Stalker's our top priority, but then there's Kunkka if we don't get it. I've seen a lot of the four time. position players doing a lot of Kunkka in pub games. Yaptor has been spamming it. Uh, and it Dyer seems to be like that. Back. The Nyx Assassin, the Night Stalker seem to be kind of flavor heroes right now. The Nyx getting removed. LGD still looking for that hero to start the ganks, you know, with the Batrider Night Stalker bans and these opening picks. Uh, X can be an okay way to catch a retreating hero, but it's not really an initiator proper. So perhaps Liquid also Five thinking about uh, some more intelligence heavy carries. Haven't really picked up any big damage dealers yet, gods. Uh, what what are what are you thinking for Liquid here? Like Miracle, Matumba Man heroes. I was gonna say Lycan, but that gets banned. So Matu heroes. I mean, the Lycan, one of his classic ones, uh, seems to be playing these more kind of tankier, like, tempo control -y type cores often... Do, are they a Bristleback on. team, Team Liquid? I think they, well, could be. Could Is that, everyone's a Bristleback team right now? <laughs> yeah, it seems like you should be. Maybe not the best heroes against, the best hero against, like, a Queen of Pain, but again, like, you may just feel like it fits your draft and it fits your play style. Let's pick it. They did ban the two supports that are, like, good with the tanky cores as well. You know, Keeper once it gets the Ags. Uh, even before that, just for the additional mana and moving them around the map, and Ten obviously IO remaining. synergizes really well with those just durable frontliners. So LGD will ban out another oh, pushing carry. That's the, the, here. Yeah. the building demolisher himself, Lone Druid. The hero's bear is pretty absurd in the current patch with it hitting like the Radiance Mask of Madness, putting on towers. It just Especially if you have the Alacrity up. Bear. We saw that. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember what tournament it was. Like a couple weeks ago, I think. Was it? Or was it Manila at Masters? Manila? I think it might have been one of like the secondary stream Manila? games. Liquid were not Manila, were they? No, it wasn't with Liquid. Oh, um, but okay. I think someone yeah, ran yeah. the Alacrity Bear and it was just disgusting. Maybe yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of one of those online matches that have happened. I think you're in right. I think... Or maybe Zotac. Anyway, um, not sure, but uh, a lot of the pushers removed. So how do Liquid adapt? Hmm. They can look elsewhere. Like the mid lane, there's a lot of heroes that can hit buildings. Your Invokers, your Shadow Fiends. Super heavy team fight and some yeah. good catch now for Liquid. I always think like Naga when I see Disruptor, like that sleep into Static Storm is so good. I'm not sure if Liquid With are going to... the gonna... vacuum especially. I mean, it does put you pretty all in on the team fight. Uh, it's uh, team fight, but you've also got the Naga split push, but it does limit some of your other areas. Neither team really looking towards the, uh, the Ench as of yet. Hmm. Something that's been popular for other teams. I think they can't really fit it in now that they've Reserve picked up Tusk time. Kunk already. Got those four position heroes. I like Ench a lot, just... Unless we see the legendary Carry Kunkka. Carry Kunkka. Carry Tusk, man. I hear yeah. a pack a punch. That's so. Shadow Literally Blade. speaking, yeah. I was trying at, to, like, that, at that point, it should like replace <laughs> the Walrus Punch sound with just like the straight Luigi fire punch from Super Smash Bros. You know? I like it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what 
LFY have in mind. They've kind of revealed a lot more about their draft with this Queen of Pain Kunker. They already showed that they want to have pretty strong team fights, strong lanes, I think is the other big aspect. So Liquid are the ones kind of responding to that. Disrupted Darkseer getting some strong laners themselves, a bit of team fight. They don't want to be out team fought and have to entirely rely on split push, but they may look, look to have that right balance where they have team fight, but they also have split push with that Naga or Terra Blade. I mean, LGD have good team fight, but they don't really have the setup right now. Oh, they take the Terra Blade. Liquid's okay. Ran this yesterday versus OG. Uh, was yeah. quite a different supporting cast for the Terra Blade. Uh, and as for Team Liquid, how do they respond? We saw the Zeus used very successfully against TB. Nobtail got punished quite heavily. Ten seconds. Uh, I don't know that Liquid are going to be able to squeeze a Zeus in here. I feel like there's a lot of cores that match up well against TB, remaining. like the Tinker type heroes. And there's also a really bad lane Tinker's for a Terra Blade. Tinker's a miracle hero. Yeah. Like the lane too, like you get snowballed on, the Darkseer Iron Shell contest in your farm. This is a pretty tough Terra Blade game because your lane's tough and more than likely you're going to get counterpicked because of this third, fourth pick. Uh, core, like mid and carries, which can counter a TB. You know, I guess it also blocks off some of the popular Matu here's like Life Sealer. You don't want to pick, pick like this melee here that's going to get melted. Even like an Ursa can be quite bad against Terra Blade. May just say, hey, we don't care they're bad against Terra Blade anyways, but... Ooh. All right. All right. I team fight, good. team fight, team fight. This is... Yep. As Manila Masters went along, you saw both Newbie and EG, I Liquid think, really showcase that bad. team fighting and... Having these very strong five-man lineups is quite effective in this patch. Uh, a lot of those games just decided by whether it's the Universe Chronospheres or Newbies Tidehunter picks in the, the Winter Bracket Finals. This is why they third picked the Terra Blade, because they, they like remaining. this TB Dazzle combo. The, mm -hmm. the Grave Sunder is really good synergy. A lot of the times you initiate on Terra Blade, you do so knowing that you can kill him before you use a Sunder, but Dazzle one of the few that can prevent that from happening. Hmm. Unless you can chain sign him throughout the entire shallow grave, but that's so, like so they need a miracle impossible. hero, and they're going to need someone who can dump a lot of damage into Chrono. Uh, there's Invoker. Yeah, that's makes like them the... a bit greedy, perhaps, and Invoker's slow. Maybe. Always great with Void, likely banned, but becomes less great because of the Dazzle pick because now you've got that grave if TB gets Chrono. How about Puck? I like the Puck. It's a lot of good damage. Dia good matchup versus Quab. Very strong mid laner right now. I, I like this respect ban uh, on yeah. the Invoker. I think that's well advised for LGD. I think there's a lot of good heroes though still left. The Puck as well as the Tinker are both very formidable right now. The Tinker may have a rough time in lane, like Quap en engaging on you with a Kunker is very tough to deal with. So I think the Tinker five is risky because of the first five, ten minutes of the game, but if it works, it, it works fantastically well. Reserve time. But it, All right. yeah, no what's, invoker. What's it gonna be? Puck's good against Kunker. You don't just necessarily die if you get ganked right up, straight up. You can actually dodge some of his spells. Same for dodging the Queen of Pain spells. LGD looking for the off laner this final pick. Slardar. And it is Mr. Ooh. Slardar. Interesting pick. grab. Uh, it does give them, I guess, really good Roche potential now with the TB and the Slardar combo. And Team Whoa. Liquid busting out okay. the Blood Suka in Russia. How appropriate. I don't say so myself, gods. What Why do you think about this Bloodseeker pick? Um, it's a miracle Bloodseeker. Hero that just keeps getting buffed time and time again. Like, I don't look at this and be like, oh yeah, this is a great Bloodseeker game. I can see exactly why they picked it to like, deal with like, an anti-mage or something. It's, I feel much more a pick where Liquid feel this hero is strong now. It's been buffed quite a bit. It's, like, tank it's fairly tanky, so it doesn't necessarily just die in the mid lane and has sustain from his, uh, his blood rate. So... We'll see how it works. I'm, I'm really curious. It's a hero that's very difficult to zone as well. And up against Quap, yeah. I, I haven't actually seen the matchup in the current patch, but historically, Bloodseeker does fine in most of those matchups as long Ten as he doesn't remaining. get like, crushed earlier if his courier sniped. He's just, his sustain is incredible. Five seconds remaining. Very, uh, very melee-heavy draft, though. Running the Void, and they have four melee heroes. So I, I worry about their ability to dump damage in the Chrono. You've got the Blood Rite, I guess. Blood Rite Static Storm is like decent, mm -hmm. but... There's no sustained damage output as the game goes later into that Chrono. Blood Rite's like a nice little AoE silence to drop on a Chrono. It's also very good against the TB Illusions. It should, for the mo all the early to mid-game stages, like clear them out pretty quickly. Have there been any big Bloodseeker changes that are notable? 
It was the buff recently. I think he got extra movement speed. I was just looking to go quickly check what his buff was. Bloodseeker, base damage increased by four, actually. That makes his oh. laning a lot stronger. I mean, yeah. that turns Especially in... with, with Blood Rage, you know, but having higher base damage means a lot more. Yeah, that's like the... That, that makes him more ideal for mid lane. Like, you don't need that plus four damage as a safe lane carry where your Prepare farm is not often contested, but in a 1v1 mid, that's where Puck has kind of kind of risen to prominence. That can make a big difference, having that extra base damage. All right, let's go. LGD Forever Young, already up 1-0 in the group stage, so off to a great start. I'm LD, he's gods, and... Oh, by the way, we've got a, a very talented stats man joining us. It's Owen Danke is the legendary OD Pixel. So if you like the stats, guys, be sure to let Valve know that uh, you don't need Knoxville anymore. You've got Owen. We've also got a uh, fourth caster, which is the yeah. Valve chat wheel right now. <laughs> How yeah. long do you think it is before it acquires sen uh, sentience and we, we lose our jobs, guys? <laughs> it's not far away. Near future. Automation is coming. I feel like there's normally the time limit on how much you can spam it, but I think it's removed. Should, should, I, should I mute them? I, I, what was the verdict? Do people like it? Do find it, was, it annoying? You know, I think with Manila, it was like the kind of, it was slightly positive, and I think it's gradually getting more and more questioned. But Well, I saw when, uh, when Pimp muted them, there was outrage. You know, people were like furious at the, the nerve of this guy. Freedom of speech, you know. Yeah. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll allow it for now. If it gets too But I, I think it's just a vocal minority, to be honest. I think most <laughs> yeah. people find it extremely annoying. But uh, we'll see how it goes, guys. Perhaps we'll do a poll. I think we do have the power. Now, we might ignore the results anyway. But we can, we can do a poll, guys. We can, but it doesn't mean we'll, we'll listen. Brutal, yeah. savage, direct. Fucking mute, says the chat. So... So uh, I'll ask you guys for your predictions on the series. Like ignoring the draft, just how do you, how strong do you think Liquid really is? I know Nahaz made this a very controversial topic with one of his bold proclamations, which he's certainly known for. That Liquid is a lock for a TI invite. A it's lock, not, LD. It's not even uh, up for discussion. Um, but LGD Forever Young certainly not a lock for a TI invite right now. But off to a strong start. Took down OG. Uh, do you? I guess do you agree Liquid's a lock? And more importantly, uh, how strong do you feel they are coming into this tournament? I don't know about lock for TI because can't really comment because it depends on how many invites they have. You know, they could just decide we're only inviting two teams. You know. Well, you know, if Navi has a good tournament, I I am pretty confident there will be an extra TI invite, guys. Okay, so three invites into yes. TI. But uh, if, I mean, it depends on number of invites to TI. It's kind of hard to say for sure outside of like the top placing teams oh, wow. at Kiev. But uh, as far as Liquid go against LFY, I think they are definitely favorites in this matchup. Uh, they are the team who has just had overall better results. LFY is like a kind of newish roster. They brought in Afu from SEA. They're looking very promising, but I think they still have work to do. Super really wanting this bounty room, but Kuro's going to deny him good shards. Placement has skilled up the blink, so we'll get back to safety. A bit of a early bounty rune win here, as I do have to fix the, the HUD, apparently. Apologies, okay. folks. Which, uh, where, do you, where do you change the HUD nowadays? Uh, you go to your... Armory, I'm gonna head up. Do, do we need to do it now, or is it all, are we okay? Uh, apparently, they, they want it fixed. Oh, we got to pause. There we go. Right. So, go back to your dashboard. Treasury, is it called? Yeah, armory top oh, right. right. Uh, um, HUD. Interface, interface, I believe. HUD, which yeah. One, which one do we want? The oh, and do you know which default HUD? HUD? Ranked. Is it default HUD, or is it? Can't go wrong with the default HUD. All right. Are you on default? I'm on default now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like the overlay still match up or something. Amateurs. Huh? Well, um, so yeah, that was a lot of harass onto a co-op early on. Had to get level one blink, which means his Bloodseeker is love and life. He's not getting Shatterstruck, which is the worst thing that can happen in mid lane. Yeah, Quelling Blade, poor man shield with Blood Rage. Very difficult yeah. to, even even from the start, to harass him on a lane because it's just so hard to prevent him from last hitting, but... I think it was a bit of a mistake from Slaughter. Slaughter should be on top of that ramp near the bounty rune, protecting the Quop at the, the start there. He needs to at least scout it out so Quop can back off, give up the bounty rune, or you can fight it. Brutal because the worst thing that can happen is what happened there, which ranked. is you lose the bounty rune and you take a ton of harass and you have to level up Link. So, not really ideal for LFY's start. Yeah, so for those just joining us, uh wanting to know what this tournament is all about. It's a full best of three round robin group stage. 
Uh, bottom two teams per group eliminated, right? I do believe so. Radiant's courier has been oh, killed. Perfect. That Radiant lose that courier. Whoopsie right. daisy. Looks like that got sniped by the Queen Quop. of Pain. Quop just yeah, just blinked, blinked in. in. Land up. Right, I mean, there we go. Level one blink on Corp. It pays off, LD. As I was saying. That's two games actually this best... tournament where we've seen the <laughs> the level one blink courier snipe. I mean, best skill to level on Corp. I mean, she knew what she was doing. She didn't want Shadow Strike. Jeez, <laughs> that's nice early, early courier takedown. It looks like the overlays have hopefully been sorted out to production's liking. Yeah. So. Jesus, Bloodseeker just turns around and fights and right clicks He's after down almost a hundred an attack already. And that's not even taking into account the Quelling Blade for last sitting purposes, yep. so, yeah. He's Good luck stopping Miracle from farming. He is dominant. And because of the split XP between Kanka, like, I think Quop is just like, leave my lane, I need level 2. I need to get my Shadow Strike up, because the split XP means Miracle is almost level and a, like, a full level ahead. Putting a little pressure here on the old Sladar, and in fact, could be in some trouble. The GH is going to have to go back in, for. look for the crouch. He does pop the Fairy Fire, Kuro's coming in too, and... Yeah, I do not see him making it out of this one, guys. First blood to Liquid. They did lose their courier earlier, but things still looking too good for them. Kuro working hard to get that kill for, for himself. And yeah, bottom lane going very well. Mid lane will get tough of a Bloodseeker. As Queen gets some levels, Kunker's going to kind of maintain his presence in this mid lane as well. Yeah, they do not want to let Miracle just freely heal back to full HP, though. So yep. you can see Afu applying the pressure mid, but... They're having to duel lane with a Quap. Normally, you pick the Quap, you, you don't need help. Yeah. So, already feels like Miracle is having a fine time here. I like what Super was doing, though, just making sure that he prioritized the zoning over going for last hits or anything, knowing that if Miracle starts getting those last hits, he'll quickly heal back up. But Bloodseeker will be probably bringing out the salve, some boots fairly soon if possible. Problem is, he's got no courier, so actually, he can't bring those out. This is actually. A pretty rough lane oh, for him. Oh, timely radiant scan, though. A super jumps in. Miracle into the trees. And now, with the oh, torrent great connecting, torrent. great prediction play Denied by fails. Afu. Yeah. Huge style points for that. Salvage, what could have been a disaster, but might end up being one anyway. Super uh, gets glimpsed back. Will end up going down. Afu sneaks away, but at least they get the kill out. Yeah, they knew GH was coming in with a salve, and they just did not want to let that Bloodseeker stay alive in lane. Works out like a, it's kind of an even trade in the end, I feel. Look at mind control. Four CS as a Dark Seer. A bit unexpected, Ugh. but Dazzle, Poison Touch level one, pretty good at zoning, and I imagine Terrible just used that Metamorph already once, probably at early on at level one. Maybe not, he's still full mana, actually. Yeah, he went for the early boots on the Dark Seer, yeah. so really feeling the pressure uh, of this lane. Huh? It's going to delay his sustain. Not really able to go jungle too effectively either. Uh, meanwhile, good news oh, for like lane. the, the Tumba's Miracle could time. be in trouble again. Uh, X is there. Kuro's going to come in, look for the snowball save, turn her around. Rolls him towards the tower, though. Then the shards come out. Can he get this last hit on Afu? He will. Miracle tries oh. to stay alive. The damage. Oh, not quite enough. Super very low. He was so close. To that was almost right a two off. for nothing. Bottom the other lane, way. So that should be OK. Some harass deep behind the tower. That was a nice snowball. Quop just got the level 2 Shadow Strike back up, but couldn't use it right away and manages to get a kill, heal up a little bit, and then almost get a second kill. Rune spawning now. Slardar not having a great time here, but hey, he's only 5 CS so apart from a Dark Seer, so all things considered, has to be fairly happy with that. Yep. Meanwhile, it is a free farm Terror Blade and a Void. Uh, overall, gods, are you are you really favoring anyone right now with Liquid giving up the courier, but having the first blood, the safe lanes, both free farming, and then the X Factor of Miracle uh, having a good time mid so hmm. far. Liquid's early game has been a little bit better, just with how their supports have gotten involved in all these kills, killing the off lane and killing mid. Oh, Kuro, he's in deep now. Afu already used the X though. Yeah. So. It feels like the carries, the mid lanes are pretty even, so it's just kind of where we see Liquid supports a little bit more experience, a little bit more gold. Although Darks here hasn't, isn't doing the best right now, that will quickly change. Hero that can farm a lot faster than Slider, especially a dead Slider. Tumbo man's like, give me a bash, give me a bash. And it doesn't need it in the end, though. I have seen the Let's clear the kill. Going for the early it. treads here. As Miracle makes Ooh, the journey back to the dangerous jungle. Dangerous place to be, but he's, but he's trying. very low. And yeah, normally as Bloodseeker, you, you don't rely on that region as much, but does not really want to risk being this low and off the map. So. 
a wise choice by him. Who sees the camp being jungled. He can land a torrent, Miracle take a lot of damage while stunned with the neutrals on him. Yeah, they're gonna let him drop a little bit lower. Quap perhaps gonna blink in. They might be able to go for a kill here. The timing could be just right, Afu. Look for the torrent, then the blink. Squid of Pain slams it home. Beautiful timing. And all of it set up by Afu. Uh, I know Winters had high praise for Afu, and with these wards and early rotations, he is putting a lot of pressure on Miracle. Yeah. Managed to get a lot of the neutral camp too with that Sonic Wave. Very well played. And well, the Slardar oh. struggles continue though in the bottom lane. He's gonna get bashed at the worst possible time. Surrounded and pounded by the creeps. He'll end up going down. So, tough lane. even game so far. Yeah, tough lane. I just feel like we're not really... We're seeing why Slardar isn't pick, picked and played much in that off lane role. Few teams are using him there anymore. And I don't know if I've ever seen a Darkseer have this rough at the start. He is getting his levels, I suppose, yeah. but Mind Control really struggling in the CS department. I think you, we've seen this patch without the Shrine. It's not quite as easy to maintain dominance in that offlane. Darkseer keeps getting nerfed a bit too, so perhaps just we're seeing the results of some of those offlane changes. Oh, Miracle. The trap has been sprung. Torrent comes through again. Snowball there, though. Interrupts the TP. Still diving him under the tower. Super will drop. The rotation not in time, and all of a sudden DDC ineffective as the dazzle so far. Yeah, Quop could you can actually blink away from the rupture without taking damage if you like do the max range blink and then like move a tiny bit. Unless that's been changed recently, but I know that's how it, that mechanic used to always work with Queen of Pain blink and rupture. So I'm not sure if Super is well, familiar with the matchup, or like I mean, obviously it's a hero you don't first very often in pro games. It used to be Quop's blink range scaled like with the old blink, and I believe it wasn't enough at the early levels. Yeah. Um, but now it's Level the same range at all range levels. Same. Yeah. Uh, so I, I believe you're correct that now so. you should be able to I'm going to find my control top. Looking for the Darkseer here. Good Torn coming through. That heal damage from the Dazzle. Substantial. And the Shadow Wave enough to get the kill. It's Afu. All four kills. His name has been somewhere on. And that's definitely working well for LFY, getting kills on mid on the Bloodseeker at top now. Very active, but unfortunately for Slider, his rotation towards mid, not going to immediately find Miracle, but he's got friends in the neighborhood. Afu's coming in. They got the Sonic Wave ready. The Miracle feeding, feeding frenzy may well continue here. As he lurks in the trees. LGD, no, he's in the neighborhood, but the Radiant Scan is timed just right. They sniff it out. Miracle will retreat Kuroki in reserve in case commitment comes. And you got to be careful now about diving that Tower Gods because Matumba is packing a TP and has Chrono ready, so... A dive with three could easily result in three going the way of Liquid. Yeah, he's he's Miracle's fight. baiting this. He really is showing himself mid. In comes the Terror Blade, but LGD can just like to push the tower. Yeah, it looks like LGD know that this tower is being kind of defended. Like at least the Bloodseeker's life is going to be protected, so they're just going to bring all five to push. But a glyph and the new changes. You bring five heroes to push a tower, it gets a ton of extra armor. You push very slow, whereas Mind Control top solid pushing a lane. He's going to push that tower faster than like the four or five heroes mid, so it doesn't really turn into a cost-effective trade to send five heroes mid this early on. Yeah, Liquid even TPing in GH, so they, they answered with four, but quickly disassemble the push on the side of LGD, and they will go back to the lanes. Seems like, I mean, TB's just not really at a point where he's got the items to truly threaten to push, even with the maxed up minimal. You need to find some pickoffs first if you want to make that kind of play, which was the idea. They kind of got in behind. They were hoping to kill the Bloodseeker with the Slatter's involvement. But it Seems like it's going to be a hard game to just five-man into Liquid uh, once they get their ults, once they have a few more levels. Still only a level one glimpse, but if you ever decide to back from that push later on in the game, you will get punished by the Disruptor especially. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the team fight synergy between Liquid is fantastic. Uh, speaking of which, the Chrono getting deployed and the bubble will spell trouble as Slardar goes down yet again. Uh, struggle city for him, really, in the bottom lane. Yeah, this is looking really rough for he him. He is below Kuroki's tusk in net worth. At zero four, his start has been pretty abysmal and just kind of hard. Anytime he goes to the lane, all it takes is like one Void Bash to set up for a kill or one. They don't need both supports. They don't need a tri lane to be a Slardar. All they need is two heroes, and that's mean, meant that. Tusk has been able to protect the mid lane, Disruptor's been free to pull and roam a bit. 
And anytime the slider comes, I'll just get those easy kills. All right, so Miracle now in position to potentially two-shot support, I want to say, oh, with the Blood Rage here. Looking for the tower dive. Monet could drop very quickly. And with the silence rupture combination, it's quite unreliable if you're going to get that Sunder off. Even with the Dazzle in reserve, only a level one shallow grave, so the range is quite low. And Liquid, we're thinking about prepping up instead of Miracle. Oh, not again. The Slardar getting caught out. Forces the DDC TP, and now that opens the way to maybe dive on mid, though this is not the killing combo. No Walrus Punch yet, so. I'm not sure Monet is in too much danger here. The nice thing about things like that for a Bloodseeker is you don't really. Rupture is such a short cooldown, and it's not like a big team fight spell that if you use it, your opponents can punish the fact that you can force out the Sunder, though, and he actually holds oh. it too long. Oh. Did not realize, I guess, that he had backup. No respect. Meanwhile, good glimpse back. Secures the retreat. Mind control dropping low. And Kuroki now with the shards. Not quite able to wrangle DDC, but fishing for it and simultaneously in the bottom lane. Matumba really farming and pressuring. So Liquid starting to flex all across the map up to a 3,500 gold lead. Yeah, this slides means he's going to get a T1 tower of his own. Top lane, they kind of vacate knowing that it could be a bit dangerous. TV's metamorphosis in play, but Liquid just splitting the map, winning the farm battle, finding kills too now, and things continue to look pretty bad for LFY. They just did not dominate the mid lane how they would have hoped to, even with a couple of kills on the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker still got farm and got items, whereas the heroes like Slatter who were dying did not get farm or items. Bloodseeker might have a lot later on, going for the Midas now. So. Economy still very much in favor of Team Liquid. Team Liquid when you use the next Krona. What is the Bloodseeker build nowadays, guns? Tank normally, Blade Mail, SMYs. Solar Crest. Yeah, Solar Crest, yeah, pretty good. Your melee core against the TP, that, that sounds very useful for your team. Um, yeah, I think that's more or less it. Halberd could be a good item. I haven't seen a ton of buffs, so maybe you get the SMY, then disassemble, but. Why is it always this stinking Slardar? Man, he's. Just... Public enemy number one for Liquid, but this time has a lot of backup, and Liquid are going to get nervous. Good Tiro Torn will connect. They have the boat ready, and they are going to let it go. The crush coming through. It's a swing and a miss for Ops. And now the snowball looks to turn things around as Liquid re-engage. Monet just can't seem to dish out the firepower. The Chrono comes through at the perfect time. It will lock Miracle in position, but still Liquid are finding these kills. Super is in danger. He's got to jump away, and Miracle imbued with that bonus move speed. Diving in onto the Slardar. Snowball's there again. The silence. It is going to barely clip him. Man, he just melts to Miracle. Almost 200 damage a pop. Those auto attacks. Oh, well, his way to the Midas now. And He's Apu, got no TP. No TP for 12 seconds. 10 painful seconds too long, it would seem, as Liquid get into position here. They do have the single pointing glimpse. Still available. Apu slowly dying to creeps of all things. Kuro jams at home. Liquid make it. 12 to 5, just comfortably in cruise control mode here. Yeah, it feels that way. You know, it's nice to have these opening games when you have a long, long day. I mean, I think Liquid probably have like two series today or something, but as far as game one goes for them, the lanes went pretty smoothly. Like, yeah, Miracle dies a few times and all that, but big picture wise, things went pretty much according to plan for Liquid. They're now team fighting very well. They got really good ulti usage off there, and they've got the team fight advantage when you look at the Chrono, the Static Storm. Great Tusk Snowball from Kuro dodging the, the Ghost Ship, which blocked a big amount of damage. And then the run wasn't applied to LFY's team because of where it was placed. So you, you use that offensively, and suddenly LFY don't have that much needed damage block. If you're in a team fight like that against Kuro Stag Storm, you've got to get the, the run off, I feel. The thing that is scary for LFY is Liquid have the superior team fight at this point, yep. like by far, and Liquid also won the lane. So. You really can't split push either, right? Because you're up against Bloodseeker, Disruptor, Void, like great heroes to chase and punish. That big team fight combo, if you commit as a five man squad, your jungle will be invaded. Already Liquid have started to take it over. So farming is tough. Pushing is not an option unless those ults are in cooldown. Then maybe Elfly can sneak it in. And you know, even going for a Roshan with that tower having fallen in these Liquid Wards seems unlikely with Slardar Terrorblade. That's supposed to be your comeback mechanic, I suppose. but. Well, ganking is also an option too. You think how, what, if you're having a bad start, how do you turn it around? You hit your, you get your slider blink, you smoke up, you gank. You can't do that when slider has so got poor. no money. Yeah. 150 gold. He's poorer than both bank. supports on liquid. They're going to smoke up and try, they have to rely on like Kunkka to get an X initiation. 
He's not even got level 4x. I mean, it's level 3, so it's at least all right with an 800 range gap closing capabilities. But uh -huh. this could be the dream scenario if Matumbo Man sticks around, but he has the high ground, at least for now. They are going to get eyes on him as the smoke breaks. They get the scream off, and now with the veil follow up, will it be enough damage coming through? The boat connects beautifully placed. The Queen of Pain ult to another torn. LGD will secure the kill. Much needed for them. But Liquid, meanwhile, still getting something off the map as they are going to push into this tower top. That's a nice kill and one that will look like turn into an objective, which is the big thing for LFY. They need to start taking towers. That's where Slado's going to get some money for his Blink Dagger. Uh, and that's where they're going to be able to slowly get their way back into this game. Monet whacks the tower down. Does keep his farm pretty solid so far, only slightly trailing that void. But certainly not the explosive start you'd like to see, although this stack maybe could help. Not the best hero for clearing stacks, but to work on it. As Miracle just continues to chip Prod at this tower, already down to half HP and no sign of a defense yet. This is a lot of free damage to be giving away on a tier 2 at this stage of the game. He's got such great vision in the area and teammates nearby to back him up. DVC. Trying to <laughs> just get near the tower is going to have to give it up, it looks like, with Liquid's move coming in. Your tower down, so the dire jungle control evaporating. Liquid, meanwhile, still maintaining their bastion of defense outside of the map. And it really is just a minefield of wards for Team Liquid. Uh, we do see some pretty good ones for LGD as well, but with no Slardar Blink, it doesn't feel like they can often convert on these. Very reliant on smokes. Yeah, you see. They've the, been chewing through those so far. Yeah, my, my first thought seeing the war was like, damn, Liquid have some great wards up. And I was like, yeah, LFY also do. But the thing is, they can't use, like you say, they can't use those wards because they're playing defensively. These great wards they have aren't really that useful when you're forced to play back and play without a Slardar Blink deck. Liquid straight into the Roche pit. So Slardar Terrorblade looks like they will be denied their Aegis. And gods, I don't know if LGD can fight into this. Mind Control has a mech, even if they knew. It would be a very uphill battle, and they don't either don't have an idea or don't care to contest because they are not coming. They're not even pushing bottom quickly. Queen of Pain hiding in the trees, so really LGD giving up a Roche truly for free. And Liquid, now with the Age of Miracle, can ramp up the aggression. LFI, all their wards still did not quite know what was going on there. Only after Roche went down did Super poke his nose out to try and damage the tower a bit more, but... That's just respect for the Disruptor as well, as Liquid are going to make their move on the mid lane. DDC gets off the grave, gets Glimpse back in. He's so freaking low. We'll maybe get off the one heal. No, the bash denies him again, and the, the struggles continue. LGD with two heroes that are feeling very easy prey at this stage. They'll just start snowballing through these towers one by one. Not very difficult for LFY to, to fight and defend these. TB still a bit item starved. Quop has, has this veil, which is all right, but there's no other magic damage to throw in. It's mostly physical, just the Kunkka damage that can go with the Queen of Pain at this point. Well, Liquid is going to back up this initial onslaught with some Midas gaming. His GH will grab his too. So, double Midas for the Liquid boys. Economy game looking very solid. And to add to that, their cores farm pretty quickly. Obviously, Bloodseeker just has a ton of damage. The Blood Rite allows him to clear the smaller camps quite easily. The Void build allows him to stay constantly hitting creeps, and Darkseer are good at clearing them as well. Yeah. So you, you should have a quad core for Liquid Emerging if this game goes on too much longer. Yeah, it's nice when you're the one who's winning, has the big team fight advantage, because as a support, there's no need to buy like a Force or a Glimmer Cape. If the game was closer, if LFY were the ones being the aggressors, as, as a Disruptor, you'd be like, man, I gotta get four stuff for my team. I gotta get Glimmer Cape, or maybe I gotta just think about Ags right away, but there's no item that GH needs. How do LGD so get back in this game? Because I am... It's feeling uh, bleak right now, God. Slada's Blink is actually suddenly coming up out of nowhere. They've just been kind of farming away in the Slada, getting this Blink up, so they'll they'll pick that up, probably look to immediately smoke, and they need to find a, a chain of pickoffs, oh, killing core heroes. It's not safe there. It's really not safe up that hill. And you can see he takes the northern route. Even then, Liquid still looking to punish. And Miracle says, great, if you're not going to give up any free kills, that means you're not defending this tower either. So he continues to bang away, rapidly draining it of its health. Well, Seeker filling that, like, pseudo bristleback roll. Got a fairly tanky frontliner, especially the Aegis, and yep. just smacking towers. Yeah, he just tanks tower hits, and he heals it up with the next creep wave coming along. 
Here's the smoke, they've got the blink. This is the first smoke has to work. Like that's the thing. If this oh, first but smoke fails. In position. He's gonna break that smoke nice and early. He will get crushed to start things off. Matumba there to answer. The torn connects. How much do you want to throw onto a tusk? Not a whole lot apparently, and now could be in danger here for the Slardars. He tries to retreat. X boat coming out, but Matumba engaging. He's getting the bashes too. He's able to bring this Slardar down inside of the chrono. And now just with one more bash, I think DDC drops here without getting off a single major spell. Bash. And finally, the grave, just in the nick of time, and now so tries to retreat out of it. Meanwhile, Miracle cleaning up on the back lines, finding Afu, and DDC did end up getting bashed again. Down he goes. Queen of Pain, the lone survivor, never even used the ult that fight. They, they just don't have the best real, like, setup for these fights. It's a crush, but it's on one hero, and that's all she wrote. Meanwhile, you've got Vacuum Chrono on the other team. One of those fights where... The first smoke with that slider blink has to succeed, or you find yourself in a world of trouble. You're going to quickly run out of smokes. Your opponents now know the slider blinks up, and suddenly you've lost a big team fight. Liquid get a tower, they get more gold, they get more items, they get harder and harder to kill. There's going to be double Manta style soon on the Void and the Bloodseeker, so they're going to have ways out of the Queen of Pain Orchid and just get a lot tankier and do a lot more damage with these. So, game gets exponentially harder after that fight now. 10k gold lead now. Team Liquid feeling very confident as Super. Still trying to work towards that Orchid. Might be in danger up top. He's gonna blink forward into the wave and Mind Control starts to pursue. Backs and back, the snowball on through. They are gonna have a Walrus Punch here momentarily. Can they burst him down in time, Super? A blink away again. With the Bloodseeker though, they can continue pursuit, but he should make it out. Police caught out of lane a bit, but see the not really lanes getting allowed, being, not be, being allowed to farm too much right now. No, no one is on this dire team all too well. TB's just been kind of passively farming his jungle, as we know the joint fights all too well. So LGD will start to group up. They have the Mantis down now on Monet. Way to deal with the Bloodseeker silence, but it feels like he'll need a lot more. He's already queued up an early BKB. Even if you get that, though, there's still the Chrono and good physical damage to cause you problems. He did this build yesterday. It seems to be just something he likes doing. Very defensive build, but in a build where you're going to have a way to deal with both silences. But like you say, there's still Chrono and there's still going to be a Walrus Punch. And the thing is, you can't really count on the Dazzle this game because that Dazzle is just so poor. So where you can normally maybe be a bit greedier, this time not the case. Is Liquid prepping for the team fight. Smoked up here, but Slider is under in good position. Has the high ground, has a blink, so he can just escape should he get jumped. And Liquid doing that smoke without the uphill vision. If they could have snuck all the way up the hill, perhaps they would have committed, but they will retreat. Not a big deal for them. They don't need to be the ones ganking or using smokes, so they're happy they have Matu farming bottom while that's going on. It's LFY who really need to connect with their smokes. When you're playing from behind, not finding kills when you use those smokes means you're just going to maintain a really bad lane equilibrium and have no map control. They go in on bottom, Void engaged on. Static Storm was committed for this. Queen of Pain, oh, not quite did. enough damage to bring him down, but it has the Sonic Wave jumping in. The bubble's there, the glimpse back too. Actually, sit, perhaps saving Super. GH now in danger, he'll end up falling, so do save the Void here. Did have to drop the Chrono for that, and now the Calvary joins the fray. Queen of Pain blink on cooldown, has the Veil, has the ultimate, but the Bloodseeker keeps the vision. Mind Control, a Karate Chop will do him in, and now with the Walrus Punch too. All the martial arts being used here. Next on the list is Slardar Liquid, making it a two for one, and they get two cores for a support disruptor, so really more than a two for one there. Void barely got out there. The Static Storm probably saving his life, so can thank GH for that one. And that was the one like moment with the Orchid before the Manta came up. So now Machu's going to have a Manta style to play with. Same for the Bloodseeker, but Void's the big target. You want to, if you want to take a team fight, you've got to engage in this Void and kill him before he Chronos. The Chrono will guarantee a successful team fight for Liquid, and they now have lost that initiation advantage. You can slide up, blink, crush him, uh, and try and burst him down during the crush into like Torrent, but that's very difficult to do and rely on. And that's about to feel a lot more claustrophobic with this tier two dropping last outer tower on the horizon. Oh, GD, look to muster their defense and they will make a move. It's onto the void right now. They know there's no chrono available. They will commit the physical damage substantial. However, with the silence on the terror blade, he's got to be careful not to get caught. Weep so plus corrosive haze. Disengage. Yeah, they, they have a ton of 
physical damage. The only worry for me is, you know, do they get to hit anyone? Because Monet still feels pretty squishy in these fights. See there, all it took was one lobby of attacks from TB and his illusions, and it was Matu from like full HP to half. Good crush. We'll find the Tusk here. Can they get more? Kuro down. Now the glimpse back, but again, look at the HP on Monet. He just him. melts to this. Just gets bursted down by Team Liquid, who charge in with the Static Storm, covering the forward progress. Mind control on the engage, too. Matu is there. He doesn't quite up the chrono just yet, but they're doing the work anyway. Kuro's going to roll his way back into this fight. Connects with the snowball, makes it another takedown. Queen of Pain to fall, and Afu glimpsed back by GH. In danger now as well on the chases. Matu, he could make it a full five man wipe with the chrono. The bubble gets dropped. Perfect positioning. Pounding through DDC. Charging onto Afu, and they will clean LGD off the map. All five dead. A lot of green now on that gold bar. Yeah. Cost him a tough buyback, but at the end of the day, that's your. Five position support buying back to come back in the fight, Dyer's offer some extra top control, top. and you know you're behind when off. they lose two and he buys back, and it's and you lose five and it's yeah. almost an even gold trade. Experience though, still even more and more favoring Liquid here. Yep. Poor Terrible, you get glimpse. He's trying to stand still while ruptured, but the glimpse forced him to move, and he took damage as a result. And this is looking more and more rough. for LFY huh? as time goes on. Liquid kings of the early game. I know that that was one of Nahaz's, you know, big talking points. Was Liquid are just so dominant early that, you know, they they can just take over and perhaps even just snowball against the strongest team. This is a team that 2-0'd OG, but not matching up well against Liquid's much more up tempo style. OG a little bit more patient and often slow to develop with their strategies. Liquid are just running at you. I mean. Looking at, at how the games develop, gods, like, is there anything LGD could have changed, or do you feel this is more just the way the lineups match? Um, I mean, that mid lane could have perhaps gone a bit better. And they got the Courier Snipe, that's the crazy thing. Like, yeah, you don't have Shadow Strike level 1, but Courier Sniping is probably better. And top lane, TB free farm. The Slider definitely had a much weaker lane than he perhaps should have. Well, that could be a potential dive here, LGD committing. Four heroes to that rotation. Actually, all five came in, but not able to commit uh, or not able to connect for a kill. This felt draft wise, LFI was pretty limited. Like the Dazzle's just stuck top. The Kunker can roam, but he put all his eggs in the mid lane basket. And problem was, they didn't really completely shut down Miracle. Four deaths early on didn't really mean too much when he's still farming and was winning his lane outside of those deaths. Shadowblade now complete. So, with in addition to all the outer towers being down, Liquid now have more ways to catch you by surprise and punish you, whether it's the Glimpse, the Shadow Blade Bloodseeker initiation. Uh, also, by the way, there's a blink on the Disruptor, so the, just the closing potential of Liquid is pretty obscene. Oh, the damage ain't lacking either, as they will collect the first cheese here of the game. Matumba now completing a Diffusal Blade. Huge damage output from the Void as well with the Manta to go with it. Liquid are... They have all the tools now, it feels like. The physical damage, the team fight potential, the map control items. All they have to do is execute that next fight. Even yeah. the Shiva's Guard is online for mind control and perhaps one of their most important items against, as you pointed out earlier, heavy physical damage from LGD. We'll see how Liquid go about breaking high ground and closing this game out. It does get a little bit harder when you're pushing into the LFY initiation, if they can get a nice blink crush into Hunker Torrent. Like. They aren't the best high ground sieging team. I mean, we mentioned Bloodseeker is like a, kind of a ghetto bristleback, but he is not as tanky, that's for sure. Yeah. With this build going for more of a damage dealer, so. Yeah, this build's not really been geared up to help them break high ground now. He hasn't gone full tank. Like, Manta's nice, but Shadowblade suggesting he wants to scale more as a late game carry. I think Liquid know, like, yeah, we're ahead and theoretically could go all in to pick up items that can help us end the game with this Aegis and Cheese, but that's also riskier than just playing for more of a late game. Wait for pickoffs to present themselves, wait for a fight that works out for us. But they are split up, and LFY say, you may have Aegis and Cheese, but we're going to actually make a play. They dropped the weave pretty early here. Just looking for that opening, and they might find it. It's on Kuroki, not the biggest deal, but still they'll take any kills they can get at this point. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is the least farmed hero in the game for Liquid. Had that been even the Disruptor, it would have been a much juicier takedown. It was a bit unfortunate. It wasn't anyone else, but I'll take it, I guess. 
Disruptor's got a load of Zorb even. Jeez, that's a lot of fun for GH. So it had an interview where he said, I like this new patch, there's more stuff to farm in. We're seeing it here. Super getting glimpsed away, the bow coming through. Kunkka on the flag, have some cocoa rum, GH. Take that one to the bank. He'll end up going down. And Mind Control dives in, but he doesn't have any sort of follow-up just yet. They're going to need some help here. Comes in the form of Miracle, chasing on the fray, but a well-timed Sunder puts Miracle in danger. Oh, geez, he does though. get the full heal up from the cheese. He's not able to find the crucial kills and late to the party. Matumba Man looks to follow this one up. He does get surged in. Has the Chrono in his back pocket. And now the Crush. While he hesitates, well, they strike initially with the initiation, but Matumba Man... Although he muscles his way forward, doesn't have the firepower to get any kills just yet. He's forced back. The Chrono's now on cooldown. And perhaps Mind Control needs to blink away. Indeed, he will. A super chases in. He gets bashed one. Will it be a second time? Could be in danger. If so, and now into the fray is the Slardar. They will crack that Aegis open. Round two, though, Kuro looks to make it a profitable one. Snowballing his way forward. And Matumba Man lunging in to position on the Dazzle. Gets off the grave. Well timed. But do they have any sort of follow? Meanwhile, a bit discombobulated as they try to work on the Bloodseeker, but he's simply too tanky. Matumba sees another opening. Great charge there by Kuroki. Locking him in position, securing the follow-up kill. Liquid on a roll here. Just pure force of arms at this point, yeah. really. Not the most coordinated fighting, but it doesn't need to be when you're this big, guys. That was like a well-played team fight by LFY across the board, but Liquid have Aegis, Cheese. They have the extra lives. Tusk guys be respawns, and, well, they've just got, yeah, too many items, too much farm, and it is all over for LFY in game number one. Slardar with 10 deaths. Don't think he gets to Melko Ward status, but well, if win the, the game, game went that. longer, <laughs> perhaps he would have. Which would want to put LGD out of their misery here as the Star Ladder champions continue their rampage here in Moscow. Game one, a complete thrashing of LGD. LGD will look for their final stand, but Miracle. Keeping things under control with the blood right now. The boat coming in. Matumba, time walking forward, but right into that boat. And now X back, perhaps an opportunity super though. Needs to get off the Sonic Wave if he wants to make it count. The Static Storm getting deployed. And now Monet, Grave, and BKB combined. Not the best teamwork by LGD, but they are on the ropes. And you can just feel that desperation is asunder. And then not a whole lot else to combo with it. Illusion forcing Miracle back. Perhaps the strongest weapon they have is this Illusion of Team Liquid. Unfortunately, it's going to end now. The Snowball directly into the Chrono. Oh. Salt in the wound. LGD being hounded back to their fountain. Miracle farming them nearly at the door. The tier fours even aren't enough to keep them safe. The Slardar scurrying back. And finally, LGD will tap out, but they took their licks and then they took a few more for good measure, ending this game down 31,000 gold. Didn't feel like they were really in it after the five to 10 minute mark, gods. Yeah, it was just very rough early game. I think that Safe lane void worked incredibly well. Maxing the bash early meant that anytime Slider came up to the lane, he was just getting gone on, and Void had solo kill potential on him with a support, it was a guaranteed kill. So very tough off lane for LFY. Meanwhile, Liquid's off lane was like guaranteed.